the special way our sister made us rise who passed away two days ago. May we lift up to God all other intentions each one of us may have in the silence of our hearts. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery.
reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of the host will provide for all his people a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich foods and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. From the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to be saved. This is the Lord for whom we look. Let us rejoice and be glad, for he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance, in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. 
I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with the glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of the gospel of 
according to Matthew that we read from is the part that falls in the, what is called the fifth book. The fifth book of of, um, of the gospel. Because the gospel of Matthew is divided into like a French that is in the five books. In the five different portions. So, but this one is what we describe as eschatological discourse. The eschatological discourse, the discourse about the end, about the last things. So that's it. Yeah. The other ones you will see we have the we have the Sermon on the Mount discourse. We have uh, a missionary discourse. We have church order discourse. And then we have the parable discourse, and then we have the eschatological, which is about the last days. So, and you can see the echoes of it in the readings in the in the responsorial psalm, say, I will go to God's house. So God's house is the end point. That is the end of our quest, being in God's house. One day in the house of God is better than a thousand miles away. And the house of God is where we want to be, is where we want to go at the end of our life. Because here we are pilgrims, and pilgrims don't stay forever in, you know, in the land where they came. They have an ultimate destination where we're going, and our ultimate destination is paradise, is heaven. So our theme today is Come to the feast. Come to the feast. The hope that belongs to our home. You remember that last Sunday's meeting showed that God planted us as the choicest vines in a fertile and well cultivated vineyard. And what did He do? He gave us everything. We needed to flourish and bear fruit that should last. Fruit that should have last. And we find this in John chapter 15, verse 16. So what it says is that God calls us to the fullness of salvation and to definitive happiness called heaven or the beatific vision. Seeing our God face to face as He truly is. Um, once upon a time, I have told you this story before, but St. Thomas Aquinas had an experience of somebody who came back, you know, who came from heaven. If, if the person died and probably was in purgatory, and St. Thomas was offering Mass for this man, and the man eventually entered into heavenly glory and he was given the opportunity to come and visit Thomas. It was like a visit from the land of the dead. So he came and said, Brother Thomas, I want to thank you for the prayers and the masses you offered for me. I am now in the glory of heaven and I see God. Thomas, being a philosopher and being a man of reason, he said, do you see him immediately or do you see him as through a mirror? How can you see him? And he said, Thomas, I see God. And Thomas said, now, do you see also the heavenly beings, the angels and the saints? And he said, I will entertain no further questions on this matter. <laughs> and he ended in an ominous way with a psalm. He said, as we have heard, so we have seen in the city of our God of hosts, and he disappeared. So anyway, that is the invitation. The invitation is to go to what St. Augustine calls the end without end. What he called where we will see, where we will love and see, where we will see and rejoice. And the question today is, what is our response to God's invitation? Will we accept or reject the invitation? This week, we shall look into that.
that hope that belongs to our invitation, that belongs to God's invitation. The theme come to the feast, embracing the hope that belongs to our call. So let, let, let us first ask, what is this invitation the Lord issues? It is an invitation to the great feast, the wedding banquet, the wedding feast for his son. And then the question is, whom did the son of the king marry? Or who is his wife? In the parable, the son of the king is mentioned as the bridegroom, but the name of his bride is not mentioned. Who is the bride? What is the name of the king's son? Answer. Christ, the son of the living God, is both the bride, groom, the bridegroom, and the son of the king, because God is the king. Do you believe God is the king? The church and indeed all people are his bride. We come to this conclusion because the invitation was to everyone. It didn't say invite only the people from Memphis. It didn't say invite only Democrats or only the Republicans. It said invite all. The king stated, invite to the feast whomever you find. Matthew 22, verse 29. No one is excluded. The king's order was even more expressive in the gospel according to St. Luke. He said, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in here the poor and the cripple, the blind and the lame. Luke chapter 14, verse 21. <clears throat> so, don't hide good news from anybody. It's for all. Don't say, I cannot share Christ with this person. No. Share it anyway. The person can accept or reject. Christ the Lord espouses himself to all. But this marriage is not biological. It is theological. It is spiritual, a supernatural, and covenantal. And that's why the scripture said, this is a great mystery. But I speak in reference to Christ and the church. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32. The word of God says, your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The God of the whole earth, he is God. Isaiah 55 verse 5, 54 verse 5. So against this background of God being the bridegroom, one sees how fittingly the parable of the wedding banquet captures the hope that belongs to our call. The Bible says, the kingdom of heaven, our ultimate goal, may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. They had mind of their own. Matthew 22, verse 1. And the king was not deterred by this initial rebuff. He reached out two more times until the wedding hall was filled to the brim. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. What that says is there is room in God's heart for all God's children. However, to enter, you must follow the narrow way. To enter, you must put on the wedding gown of righteousness. Revelation chapter 19 verse 8. And what does 
That wedding garment of garment of righteousness mean it means interior disposition of repentance. It means change of heart and mind, a consistent life of good deeds. You cannot say, I did good yesterday, so I'm free. Today I have a vacation. I can do bad things. No. You have to do good consistently, always. And Saint uh, Ignatius of Avanta put it this way. He said, and being in harmony with the commandments of God as a lute with his strings. I said, how does this tie in with the first reading and the responsorial song? The first reading says, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure cho choice wines. Isaiah 25 verse 6. And this reading from Old Testament way back in 8th century foreshadows the wedding banquet God gave for his son, which the gospel spoke eloquently of today. To describe how this hope that belongs to our call is brought about, the Bible used the title, Lamb of God, for our Lord. How many times? 28 times. In 22 chapters of, books of, of the book of Revelation, the Lord was called the Lamb of God. And what is that Lamb? What, what is he doing? The Lamb. Who is in the center of the throne? We shepherd them. We shepherd us and lead us to the springs of life given water. And God will wipe away every tear from all eyes. Revelation 7 17. The voice from heaven confirms how this will happen. Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God will always be with them as their God. So that's how God will effect this. And he said, He will wipe away, He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, or mourning, or wailing, or pain. For the old order has passed away. Revelation chapter 21, 3 to 4. For he will destroy the last enemy of man. What is the man's last enemy? It is sin and death. The hope that belongs to our call dawns in a hitherto unheard way when the word of God came flesh and dwelt among us and opened access to the Father to us. The word who became flesh is the son of the king. Is the good shepherd who leads us in the right path for his name's sake. He is the one who spreads the table before us in the sight of our foes. He anoints our eggs with all and our cups overflow. Psalm 23, verses 3 and 5. Dear brothers and sisters, God Almighty delivered us from the power of darkness and transformed us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 13, 14. So, what is our response? To the invitation of our Lord. May our response not be like those of the Rogians and the Pharisees. How did they respond? After hearing the parable, they sought a way to entrap our Lord. They heard the parable about the end times, but they didn't listen. Rather, rather than heed the call, 
to change their ways, what they did is they began to ask our Lord questions about paying taxes to Caesar or not. They reduced theology to politics and economics. People still do it today. When they preach the word of God, they, what they see there is your political position, whether you're a Democrat or Republican or Independent. But that is not the word of God. The word of God is beyond politics. It's about the word of life. So, we must avoid that mistake of the Corinthians because that was a wrong move. The way forward is to accept God's invitation and dress up in the wedding garment. Unlike that fellow who slipped into the wedding hall without the wedding garment. He was spotted. The king saw it, but he didn't have it. So to reject God's invitation is to choose the darkness outside where there will be wearing and grinding of teeth. Because as the choices we make have consequences. If you say yes to God, like Mary, you are in heaven. But if you say no, you have chosen H-E-L-L, and that's not a good place to go. Each time the Holy Mass is celebrated on Sundays and weekdays, the Lord invites us over to a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, the heavenly Jerusalem, where God will destroy death forever. In the Mass, the juicy, rich food is the body of Christ. The pure, choice wine is the blood of Christ. So Christ Jesus, whose body and blood we receive, is the hope of our call. Christ Jesus is heaven. He will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever and wipe away the tears from all faces. Isaiah 25, verse 7 to 8. So, our marching order is severe, severe, cut off all bond that hinder you from accepting God. Do not reject the call. Come to the feast. Amen. Amen. <coughs> May we rise and profess our faith. I believe in the one God, God, the Father of our Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, high from life, true God from true God, because of not me, how substantial with the Father, through him all things. <laughs>
prayers of the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the grace to be able to respond promptly to God's invitation. So every day of our life, put on that wedding garment. The wedding garment of truth, of righteousness, of holiness, of, of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those, those who rejected God's invitation out of ignorance or out of defiance, that God will help them to see that the choices they are making are not the one that will lead them to the peace and the happiness they see. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are anti-religion, anti-church, anti-God, that they'll see a position, they see it themselves from the right perspective that the position they have chosen is the one that does not lead anywhere to pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have never heard the good news, whom nobody has shared the gospel with, that the Lord will grant them that opportunity that they may hear the word of truth and embrace it with all their hearts. We pray to the Lord. <coughs> we pray for the grace to overcome any form of habitual sin or harmful relationship or any state of life that is contrary to the gospel. That we may embrace the truth that the gospel preaches, the gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the respect for the sacredness of life from conception until the natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, <coughs> We pray for end to racism, for end to abortion, for end to euthanasia, for end to prostitution, for end to human trafficking, all forms and terrorism, all forms of degradation of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray also for the sick, all our dear ones who suffer with days of illness, that God will bring them healing and solace. We pray to the Lord. Lord we, we pray for vocation to responsible lay apostles, vocation to priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord we, we, pray. we pray for the souls of the faithful departed. For souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? For an end to violence in the city of Memphis, we just let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For continued health and safety of all of our children, wherever they are. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for end to this pandemic that has Oh, the world cast. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all our intentions in the silence of our hearts. Heavenly Father, you know our needs even before we think of them or open our mouths. Hear our prayers, grant them more than we can put in words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Please join us singing our gift of preparation for the close of all the number seven eight.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to our God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Father, the good and good of all his holy church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through this act of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring forth to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the holy king who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
we entreat your majesty most hum humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May we sit for a moment for announcement. Sheets are available in the narthex for adoration on Friday, November the 6th. Mass begins at 10.30 a.m., followed by adoration at 11 a.m. Please sign up to spend some time with our Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> I wanted to, uh, well, I don't know whether to sit up or apologize to those who were ready to come out to the um, to the civil rights museum for the rosary that was scheduled today, you know we had to cancel it because of the weather. Uh, when I think of the weather, I always remember what one of my fellow students in Rome said about weather. He came from um, from one of the European countries, countries that has a very severe um, he, he came from Norway. He always said that in his country, they say there is no bad weather. There is only bad dressing. <laughs> so, that no matter how cold it is, you can dress to, to the teeth that it will not get you. But, uh, you know, uh, it was raining. So, it, it didn't appear wise to come out in the rain and get sick. So, that's why we cancelled it. Hold it to another time. So whatever is scheduled, I will let you know and uh, pray you will have fair weather that they will go and, uh, and pray the Lord's way. That's it. <clears throat> As I said last time, uh, I didn't get any objection about moving the tabernacle to here. So uh, if you know, if you have any uh, any idea about how beautiful it would be, because I would like it to be magnificent, to be beautifully situated. If you have any idea, you can suggest to us. Some of us are gifted in arranging things that, you know, when you come, you see it is beautiful. So if you have any, then bring it on. Uh, share that with me or with Karen or with Val uh, or with any of the members of the Liturgy Committee. If you don't know the Liturgy Committee, that's Lance, that's Lenora, and Pat, and um, I think uh, no, this is no Max. Leon Jones. And Leon Jones. Yeah. And uh, Dennis Jones, too. So you can bring it on. Uh, and then, good Joe, if we wanted to give him a befitting place, I wish that our order is wider, but, you know, we can break through with what we have. We can't, we can't, you know, make it wider, but we can put the tabernacle in a way that will be befitting and beautiful. All right, then we'll rise. The Lord be with you.
morning and singing our closing hymn, He Has Done Great Things For Me. Number seven.